Hey everyone, you're listening to Midlife Matters, the podcast for women parenting teens and young adults. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Mindy and Julie to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Last week we talked about rejuvenating our spaces, and this week we're going to talk about rejuvenating ourselves. Self-care is a huge buzzword right now, and we're going to look at how we can recharge physically, mentally, and spiritually. Let's get started. We're back again. Today we're going to be talking about self-care, but before we get to that, I wanted to see how's everything been going this week? Oh. Well, we're in <laughs> we the both- middle. Ah. <laughs> We're in the middle of a bathroom remodel, which is, you know, it's fun and exciting to think about the finished product, but no matter how fun and exciting, it just doesn't seem to diminish the bad part of Mm -hmm. living through it. So kind of my hopes of having my calm, peaceful, quiet January is just really not happening (laughs) (laughs) because... You know, we have four men in the house and saws running and, and I have this nice white layer of sheetrock dust on everything. Oh, oh so they, you almost have yeah. to just wait to clean that because you could clean it every day and it'll be back. Right. That's hard. It's hard to just let it sit there, but I right. know it's kind of a useless you know, uh-huh. thing to do right now, but they're putting the sheetrock up today. So I'm thinking after this, maybe oh, I can good. get a little cleaner. Right. <laughs> I bet the transformation is fun to maybe start to see, but you're probably still in the early enough stages where you're not even rewarded by that. Yeah. And I'm living in a guest bedroom, me, my husband, our large dog and cat, Uh (laughs) all locked in there at once so that, you know, that nobody escapes. And that's been interesting. Isn't that funny? You pull up to your beautiful home and you're like, but I'm stuck in one room with everybody and everything. (laughs) Yeah, you know, we're back to sharing one sink, and there's a litter box and food and a giant dog cage all there. Right. Oh, my goodness. A little too close for comfort. Yeah. (laughs) Well, how about you, Mindy? What's going on with you? Oh, I'm so excited because I have the sweetest friend, Katie, that I met at the YMCA. Well, first of all, she subscribed to our podcast, which I thought, that is a really nice friend. (laughs) But second of all, she listened to, I don't know if she actually listened to our hospitality episode, Mm -hmm. but the three of us in unison said, please just invite someone. (laughs) <laughs> like the the invite alone is just means so much. So Katie, my friend, invited my entire family over to her home last Friday night. And um, it was such a gift because I think I'd taken for granted going over to a friend's house and the boys running off to play. It sounds like such a simple thing, but to walk in her doors to meet her precious husband and her three boys and my boys just followed her boys downstairs and they just played and played and played. And It was the sweetest time to get together, to be in her home, cooked, of course, a fabulous meal. Anything would have tasted good, but she really is a good cook. It was just so sweet. Yes. (laughs) Oh, that's great. I know you start to feel at home when you have somebody that you, oh, you might see at the grocery store and know, or you might run into. And that's when it starts to feel a little bit like home. Yes. That's great. Uh, How about you, Marie? What's going on? Well, I was looking at my 2019 list and I thought, well, maybe I'd share with (laughs) listeners that I had actually done a few of the things so far a couple weeks ago. And now the name of the movie is leaving me, the Jennifer Lopez movie. What was it called? Oh, yes. The second act. I did go to see that with my son um, on a Saturday afternoon before he went back to college. And we had a good time seeing that. There were not very many people in the theater. I don't Mm -hmm. think that movie is going to be winning any awards, but it was right. entertaining and fun to see. Um, definitely a good DVD rental if you've missed it. I don't know if it's still out in theaters or not. And then I've been doing my bullet journaling, which has yeah. been keeping my mind more on track. And I've been having some fun with that. And then also my daughter, my oldest is turning 23. And so we're having her over this weekend for a little birthday dinner, her and her husband. And I said, what do you want me to make? And she said, well, why don't you try that squash soup that you said you wanted to make? (gasps) Yes. And I had said in our 2019 Things We Want to Try podcast that I wanted to make Joanna Gaines squash soup. 
And one of the things that was holding me back was that I didn't have an immersion blender. But my daughter got one for Christmas from someone, which is such a random kitchen tool because (laughs) here I've been cooking all these years and had to look up what an immersion blender even was. And she She gets one. (laughs) Yeah. She called me after she listened to the podcast. She said, Mom, I have one of those. So she's going to bring it on Sunday and we're going to attempt to make this soup. I will let you know how it is. I'm not a phenomenal cook. And already when I looked at the process, it was a little daunting, but I'm just going to try and follow the steps. <laughs> you can do it, Marie. You can do it. <laughs> yes, take pictures. Well, hey, well, after last week's podcast, Marie put me on to this woman's blog and Facebook account, and she's a decorator here in Nashville. Yeah. And she wrote an article called The New Maximalist. Oh, I so, love it. <laughs> so so in the last podcast, I admitted that I wasn't a minimalist, and right. I had it teensy little bit of guilt and shame that I wasn't. I love <laughs> but that now you said that, I have though. found my decorator identity. I'm the cozy really? maximalist. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look that up. Cozy maximalist. That. Cozy yes. maximalist. And you know, I'm not a hoarder, but I do like my stuff and I like right. it out and I like to collect things. So I don't know. I'm just really excited about this that I'm free to now call myself that. (laughs) Yes, I'll put a link um, into the show notes to that blog post that she wrote because it was, I like following her because she doesn't always go with 99% of what you read. And she was really making the point that it's okay to enjoy things and enjoy collections and to display them and to have things in your home. We don't all have to be getting rid of everything. And she had a neat perspective on it. So I'll link to that in the show notes if you want to find out what Julie's talking about. (laughs) Excellent. I can't wait to look at that. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So last week we did talk a lot about kind of taking care of our homes. And so we thought it would be good to follow that up with taking care of ourselves. And self-care can mean so many different things in today's world. So one of the things that we thought we might do is just define what self-care means to us. I was excited to start like pondering this. And I noticed that I kept tweaking my answer. And I was like, well, what about that? What about that? And so I tried to narrow it down. What I narrowed down to was Doing or undoing activities or thought processes that promote a healthy and vital, thriving life, allowing you to have all you need to accomplish what God has given you to do. Ooh, wow. that's a big mouthful, Mindy. <laughs> Break that down for us. <laughs> Sorry. I told you I kept, I was like, wait, it could be mental, right? <laughs> Professor have, Mindy, expound on that. Like that. Like, well, there's things, you know, that sometimes that it's a physical activity, sometimes it's a mental activity or thought process that you're struggling with or that you have to take care of. So each day is different. Mm -hmm. Life is very daily. And when it came to self-care, I don't think that there's just one plan of attack that you can stick to every single day that will always work. So Mm -hmm. how about you, Julie? Mine was simple, but just being the very best version of you by being a good steward of the life you've been giving, taking care of your body and your mind. This question kind of reminded me of when you're on an airplane and the stewardess says to put your own oxygen mask on first before you help somebody else. Like you have to take care of yourself if you're going to be able to help anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Good example. When I was thinking about self-care... I was thinking about there's a difference in my mind between self-care and self-maintenance. So Mm -hmm. I don't count in my own self-care anything like getting my hair done, going to the doctor. You know, those I feel like are just maintenance things for your body. But self-care, I feel like, is doing something that makes you feel loved, healthy, and in a better headspace than before you started. And I think that can be all different things for different people. Everybody enjoys different things, but some of the examples that I thought of were going on a walk, prayer, reading, creating art, uh, watching a special show, listening to music, eating chocolate alone (laughs) is one of my self-care activities. It's the practice of taking, and I read this on the internet, it's the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness. Mm Mm-hmm. So you have to decide what brings you happiness. 
just this morning I was listening to a podcast and they were describing like skincare as self-care. And I, and I do think that's an appropriate way to use it, but I don't consider that kind of self-care what we're talking about today because I consider that more like self-maintenance. I don't know. What do you guys think about those two distinctions? Well, I guess I did think of going to the doctor and the dentist as self-care because those are things that, I don't know, when my kids were younger, I often didn't do. Oh, like, okay. I, I would let years go by and not go to the doctor mm. and the dentist. So I thought, you know, that's that's not really fair to my family to to not get a checkup. And, you know, that's true So for me, for me, I do have to think of that as I'm taking care of myself. So I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm taking care of myself so I can be here, you know, for, for everybody else. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good point. How about yeah. you, Mindy? And I was also thinking that working out is one of those things that I do put into self-care and it's not necessarily something that every day I think, Oh, working out's going to make me happy. You know, I think you have to be careful with saying what's going to make me happy mm -hmm. because sometimes it's an activity that you don't really want to do, but you know that you need to because right. it will be better for you. You know, like working out. I loved what you said, going for a walk, you know, making that time to spend with the Lord each day. I know that everything else in my life falls into place when I have had time reading scripture, um, praying, and also being quiet before the Lord and listening. Mm -hmm. What is self-care not? You mentioned eating chocolate is self-care for you. For me, that could quickly turn into self-destruction because <laughs> Marie, you're the only person I know that could eat one piece of chocolate a day. Oh my Me, goodness. once the bag is open, you know, I'm done. Like <laughs> the bag Marie gone. is so disciplined. I eat three pieces, Julie. I, oh, okay. Three. But they're probably very tiny. They're the dove darts. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, you know, sitting on the couch, binge watching Netflix, eating comfort food, like my husband always jokes, comfort food is the most mislabeled thing ever because he said, I feel so terrible after I eat it. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. those things really don't make you feel better. They might make you feel better for a few seconds, few minutes. But when you overindulge in those kind of things, it's really not good for you. It's not, you're not going to feel better. I think you kind of have to think about, is this going to be good in the long term? Mm -hmm. You know, like exercising may seem like, oh, that doesn't make me feel good. But I know in the long term it will. It's not always an instant thing. You kind of have to say, is this good for my future self? Not just right now. So right. a lot of, you know, a lot of things can be bad habits, uh, neglecting your responsibilities because you're binge watching TV or whatever. And I'm not saying that those things that we do, we all do those things occasionally. Mm -hmm. right. But I think if that's your habit, your go-to self-care, I think you have to question, <laughs> is this really right. what's good for me? It seems like those things, which are really good sometimes, you know, it would be really good for the person that's constantly running to be able to maybe sit down and binge watch one night or yeah. to have that comfort food. But I think when you get into the excess, when you get into the unbalanced is where you get into trouble. You know, comfort food is great when you know when to stop and you don't have it all the time. Mm -hmm. Something else I thought of with this is it's not an abandonment of all of your morals or a throwing away of everything that hasn't gone your way um, or the ability to do or say whatever you desire ahead of anybody else. I think um, sometimes this self-care can be easily mixed up with well, I need to take care of me. I don't care what you're going to do. This is what I need. And I think anytime you have that many eyes in a statement, mm -hmm. um, you, you kind of have to step back and say, okay, so is this me putting myself above everybody else? I think that there are times to step back and take care of yourself, but it's not a completely selfish, selfishly motivated. I don't know. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do like think a, that the term self-care is kind yeah. of becoming a popular buzzword in the, in our culture, and it's kind of maybe given people permission right, or an excuse to engage in some things that aren't really healthy or positive. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. in the name of putting myself first. Well, right. I don't know that that's really biblical to, to be putting yourself first all the time. Like one example yeah. I thought of was, well, I'm not appreciated at home, so I'm out of here. <laughs> 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 yeah, that might be a little extreme. That might be a little, yeah. Unless you're that just may... leaving for Target for two hours, in which that case. Is, 
different. If yes. dad is home, it's understandable. <laughs> that's right. That's right. A little communication goes a long way. Mom needs a break. Leave break. your kids unsupervised. But yeah. hey, if there's another adult and you need to get out for a couple hours. <laughs> I was thinking that self-care isn't anything that makes you feel worse after you've done it. I can do this even with, you know, we've already used binge watching a show. It's fun to maybe sit down and watch two or three. If I'm still sitting there four hours later, I've probably (laughs) neglected other things. But even like if I get into a project or something that I love, I can spend a lot of time researching it. I can spend a lot of time working on it and I don't want other people to bother me. And I get more and more upset that I'm being interrupted in my project. I think just anything that makes me feel worse at the end, because if I have overindulged in creating something or doing something I enjoy and I've neglected a bunch of other things, I actually feel a little worse. This this used to happen to me with books. I love to read and I find it hard to just, I don't, I never understand it when people say they can read a chapter a night before bed. In my mind, I think you must not really enjoy that book because if I love a book, I want to read it while I'm stirring dinner. I want to read it while (laughs) I'm, you know, folding the laundry. I want to see what happens next. I'm not able to just say, well, I'll read the next chapter tomorrow. So I Mm -hmm. used to have to, when my kids were little, especially limit my book reading And after I had read a great book and neglected, you know, my responsibilities, I would have to close the door on reading for a period of time, even if it was just a few days, because I knew that I would not be able to get my life back on track as long as there was this great book calling my name every spare moment. I totally went through that stage and it was when like the kids were younger. Mm -hmm. And I remember that actually when we lived in Brentwood, that I would read books and I would wait until they went to bed at night. Well, then I'd be up till two or three in the morning because mm-hmm. I, I, it was the only quiet alone time and I savored it so much. Well, then I'm not ready for the next day. You know, those little toddlers yeah. are up early and it's like, <laughs> well, I loved that time alone and that reading, but it was probably a little too much. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. get that way with craft projects. You know, if I'm painting a room, I can't just say, I'm right. going to work on this from eight to 12 and then, you know, I just have to finish <laughs> And I still struggle with that. So that's why I'm trying to block off time, you know, to Mm -hmm. do the things that I want to do, but not to overstep that time period, you know, so that I neglect meals and everything else that I need to do. (laughs) Laundry. (laughs) There's a fine line between self-care and self-indulgence, maybe, or just going off the rails with what you're doing. (laughs) And that happens to all of us. I mean, who wants to stop doing something enjoyable? Oh, but no. Marie, for those of us that read a chapter a night, it's like I enjoy it. So I savor it and say, ooh, I'll get to do this again tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, and you can, <laughs> and I think and you were talking about the chocolate. I can say to myself, well, that bag of chocolate isn't going anywhere because I actually do hide it. So I don't have to worry that someone's going to come along and eat it all. So like for you with the book, you know, your book is still there. I still know my chocolate is there. So, you know, I think everybody just has different areas that they're able to control themselves. I cannot control myself with the book. I know no one's taking it, but I just have to know what happens next. So Marie hides her chocolate from her kids and I have to hide it from myself. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And when Mindy was saying that it's selfish, it's not self-care when we say, look, I'm doing this for me and I don't care what you're doing. I was feeling a little bit guilty that I do do that with food in my house. You know, when you have a big family, oh, I just will off. say, yeah. you know, this is mine. That's I don't right. feel bad. Or there's only one piece left and I'm the one that made it, so I get to have it. And- <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with you. Big families and food. You learn to eat your stuff and you hide it. My kids are hiding stuff all over the house. <laughs> yes. I can remember our twins um, when Lauren was, she was probably no more than four. And I used to buy those uh, pudding packs. You know, they're like come four in a pack. Well, I thought there were more in the pantry and we like to have them after dinner. And I said, I just bought these. Where would these be? And then I said, Lauren, Lydia, did you guys get in here and eat these? No, no. You know, and then a little while later, she went and showed us where she had hidden some under her bed. Right. (laughs) It's always under the bed. Of course, I felt guilty for setting that example, but (laughs) it's what you have to do in a big family. Right. (laughs) My boys do that with Coke. If they have Coke cans, you know, like regular Uh Coke, which I don't ever buy 
then they stash them in the fridge and then they're mad when it's gone. Cause they know oh. to go look, you know, they know to go look for their stash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right. So that kind of leads us to our next question, which is, is self care selfish? Does it make you feel guilty? Why or why not? If it's truly self care, I don't think we should feel guilty. Um, if we are feeling guilty, maybe we need to just look into that, like, you know, check ourselves like, well, what, why am I feeling guilty? Mm -hmm. I know that I, I definitely, I do struggle with this. There's still a lot of people in my home. Sometimes it makes me feel guilty and that's not coming from anyone in the family. That's purely me saying, I really need to set some boundaries. Um, nobody's going to miss me if I take some extra time and sit in the bathtub, maybe instead mm -hmm. of taking a quick shower to hurry back downstairs. But that's me saying, Mindy, you need to take a break. Like you need to realize you've hit a threshold. Nobody cares that you're going to go take a bath. Like they're fine with that. They want you to do that. But I still do struggle with saying I need to take myself out because like, oh, I want to spend time with them. Um, I wanted to make this dessert tonight. I want to do this tonight. Knowing that I need to take a little break or leaving the house and leaving all the kids at home. I still have this fanciful view that they're going to want to sit and to talk with me and play games and they don't really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so being okay with, okay, guys, I'm going to leave the house and go for a walk for an hour. I'll be back. And they're completely fine. They, I can hardly get a goodbye mom out of them because they're so distracted doing whatever else they want to do. They so, probably didn't even know you were gone. They, they didn't even hear you. that I walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like it's the exact opposite in our house. If I were to go and take a bath, I would get 10 knocks on the door with needs. Ew. Yeah. Oh, just from everybody, everybody in the house. If I didn't go to do something by myself, nobody would talk to me. And the same thing when we go for a walk. You know, nobody could have needed one thing from us all Saturday morning. But if Steve and I right. leave to go for a walk, I'll get 10 texts from oh, the girls on <laughs> fighting or can you take me here or where's this you know I just think that it's just like when your kids were little and you'd get on the phone like all of a sudden it's a magnet for every yes. need that they have right so then if, if you were in the bathtub taking your bath and you got 10 knocks would you feel guilty about taking a bath I think I'd feel guilty that I probably yelled shut up at them leave me alone <laughs> yeah I'd feel mad <laughs> I would feel mad. <laughs> Me too. Can I get just a second alone? Yes. I have to start all Is over this again. Too much to ask. <laughs> right. Well, I def I definitely don't think that taking care of yourself is selfish, but I do think, at least in my own life, it often inspires guilt. Because I yeah. think that we get mixed messages. We hear it's okay to take time for yourself, but not too much. Take care of yourself, and then you'll be better able to take care of your family. But also, be all things to everyone in your family and put their needs above your own. You get so many different mixed messages. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can be sitting there enjoying myself, and a member of the family will make a comment. Must be nice, or what are you doing, or how long are you going to do that? And that just completely inspires so much guilt and ruins the enjoyment of the self-care. Does that happen yeah. in your house? <laughs> My son, Andrew, will call me, oh, mom, I'm not interrupting any um, watercolors of birds, am I? You know, like, oh, and he, I mean, that he's that just sarcastic so and yeah. he, I totally know he's joking, but that's how he usually starts his call. Like, what you doing, mom? Right. <laughs> Like it's some ridiculous thing that's totally unnecessary to life. And you feel life. like you have to hide it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bryce and I have a joke that um, he's joked like from the beginning of our marriage. We joke that I'm sitting at home eating bonbons on the couch watching soap <laughs> operas, which I have never done. But it's just kind of like the joke because he knows like how busy things are. But it's ironic. I never knew like what my mom did during the day when we were all in school and she still stayed at home and any woman, like I've been, I've been a working mom and I've been a stay at home mom. 
And I'm so thankful right now to be a stay at home mom with the kids in school. And I can't tell you how busy I am mm. with doing the things during the day so that I can be free to spend with my family at night. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows what those things are in your family. They have, they really don't have a clue. Like, how busy we are. <laughs> and it's even hard at the end of the day if you tried to convey what you did. Oh, it, it doesn't sound, sound like, like much. Yeah. It sounds like I did three things, yeah. you know. But I'm like, busy. I hardly ever sit down all day long. I'm very busy now, but it's just hard right. to say what I do. Right. Right. All right. Um, another thing that we looked at was does self care look different on different days or seasons of life? Definitely does for me. I think uh, when my kids were little, this is being honest, I'd sign up for a Bible study just to get out of the house. You know, it was just yes. a way to, I've got to get out around people. Mm -hmm. But then also it's like, if you've been around your kids and lots of chaos, the greatest thing ever would just be to go somewhere by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of depends on what your day was like. We learned pretty early on when my kids were little, my parents would take them for a week and we used to go places and then we'd come back you know, stressed out so that we learned that the best thing was to have the kids gone and just stay at home, oh, you know, to actually so be in your own home alone mm -hmm. is just, is just really nice sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, now that not many people are in my home, I like to go out, you know, I like to meet a friend for lunch or go for a walk or whatever with a friend. So it kind of depends on what your day's been like. And yeah, I was thinking that I didn't really do much in the way of thinking about self-care before I had kids. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to do something and it didn't interfere with school or work, then I did it. I never gave it much of a thought. I think after having kids is when women really start to question how much self-care they're allowed to have and when they're allowed to have it. I remember, you know, you bring this new baby home and you start pouring yourself out and you don't know where you end and the baby begins. Mm -hmm. Even your shower, they're in the bouncy seat right mm -hmm. outside the shower because you're afraid to leave them in another room by themselves like you just you be it becomes all consuming and it's really hard to figure out okay what am I able and allowed to do for myself anymore so when my kids were little I treated the morning nap as a time to work on things around the house that I couldn't do when they were awake and the afternoon nap is my time so as soon as they went to bed down for the afternoon nap, I ate lunch by myself and I did not clean or cook or do anything but what I wanted to do, unless there was, you know, extenuating circumstances. And I just felt like that allowed me to feel refreshed and ready to see them when they woke up. And other moms, or maybe I would read this in magazines where they might suggest that you do your household chores or things during the nap time so that you can be totally available for your kids when they wake up. I say, forget That's that advice. Yeah. <laughs> you do something waste. for you. Yes. And if they see you vacuuming later, that's okay. If you have to do the laundry when they're up, it takes work to run a household. No child right. has ever been damaged by seeing that it takes effort to make your home run. So I would definitely say enjoy those nap times to any young moms that we have listening. Right. Yes. Amen to that. Best Absolutely. part of the day. <laughs> yes. Just sit down. I know. And I always felt that um, when my kids were younger, Marie, I totally wrote down the same thing about the shower when I had babies, that my self-care at that point in my life was an uninterrupted shower. Mm -hmm. That was just the best gift. And I, <laughs> I started showering at night because Bryce was home and I wouldn't have to have the baby or toddler with me in the bathroom. Different days of my life now, though, look differently. Sometimes, especially now after this move, I feel like we're still in a period of transition and a period of, um, you know, the kids are navigating still, you know, a new environment. We're still trying to find a church home. Um, are we going to be involved in a small group? And so some days I'm really excited about that. It's an adventure. I have all the energy and I have everything that I need to get out there, meet new people. Let's do this. And then there's other days like yesterday where I need to take some time out. I need to, I need time with the Lord where I'm saying, Lord, I really need you today. It's a struggle mentally. I do not feel ready to take care of anybody else's needs. Mm. And so I spend time in scripture. I spend time praying and talking to him. 
and I spend time in worship. I'm so thankful that we have a good Christian radio station here because even running errands, I hear the words and some days it's like, I'm just clinging to them so tightly with clenched fists. I'm like, Lord, you know, see me, see us, help us. Mm -hmm. I do think (laughs) that you're going through a big transition in your life where you have a lot of questions. You've had to move to a new community. You've basically had to start over. And it wasn't something that you sought out. It was something that you had to do. And I think that when we're going through times of stress, there's a lot of inner work that needs to go on just for you to be able to hold it together on the outside for your kids. It's true. (laughs) And you need time to do that inner work. And it is winter season in, in my life outside my window. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's winter and I'm praying the Lord just grows our roots deep in him. And this has always been a time with moving and transition. If anybody else has um, out there has ever moved, you realize that typically it takes a good year and it's kind of lonely that Mm -hmm. first year. That's a time that I've always found to be a gift because I get to know the Lord better because he's really all I have. And so while it's quiet, while it's dark, while it's cold, while it's lonely, I have that time with him. But yeah, some days are just harder than others. Mm-hmm. So, and it's a perfect example of when they say for you to t- put your own oxygen mask on before your child. Yes. You have to do that work in your own mind, Mindy, mm-hmm. by yourself, or you won't be able to hold it together for your family. And then your family will suffer because I think they do look to you. If you're seeming okay with things, mm-hmm. then they're going to think, okay, well, this is okay. And if you're falling apart, then they're going to start falling apart too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll be definitely. perfect. Uh, yeah, to be perfectly honest, that's exactly what it is. Any mom out there, you realize that you're kind of the heartbeat of the home. Everyone checks in with you. You set the tone of the house, whether you're working or not. You're the one setting the tone. Sometimes that can feel like a really heavy weight or burden mm-hmm. if you're not taking care of yourself. And so yesterday was just one of those days that I knew the kids were at school. I was so thankful. Everybody was healthy at school. And I knew it was one of those days. And I just felt like the whole day I was just begging the Lord, Lord, I need you. I need you close. Please show me yourself. And I have to be honest and give over those things that I'm feeling fearful or anxious about or sad about. And I have to remember who he is and his promises and his word, because then when the kids come home, you know, somebody's saying, oh, I talked to this friend at our last school and I really miss them Mm. and I'm able to handle that. And I'm thinking the same thing. I really miss it too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, I really wish I went to my old school. I heard that several times yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to handle those conversations and not fall apart. Right. Um, Yeah. I was thinking about people that work all day. I know that if you're listening to this podcast on your commute home, you're probably thinking, well, I just worked all day. And the second I walk in the door, people are going to be needing me. Mm -hmm. Where's my (laughs) self-care? I do not have an answer for that. The the most I've ever worked while raising kids is part-time. And so I kind of compartmentalize those days. All right, fine. I'm not going to do anything for myself, but get people ready, go to work come home, make dinner, get people in bed. But Mm -hmm. I know that the next day I'm home. If I had to keep doing that day after day after day, and I knew there weren't certain days of the week that I was going to be at home, that would be really hard. I would love to hear from listeners, because I know that you still need self-care, even if you do work full time. I was trying to think of things that I might do if I worked full time. I think I might just pull over in a neighborhood and sit in my mm-hmm. car for 20 minutes and not go home. Because <laughs> yeah. for me, self-care begins with time by myself. Right. So just to have some mental headspace. But that might be hard if you have your daycare provider saying, hey, I get off at this time. I don't know what the answer is to that. Do you guys have any suggestions? Well, and well, your commute might have your kids in tow if mm-hmm. you pick them up at daycare. So I, was, I would say, oh, I could listen to something like a book or a podcast on the way home, but that may not even be available if your kids are in the car, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, 
I worked the past couple years when we lived in Tennessee and it was very different. It was a different type of, um, you know, need, I guess. And so sometimes, you know, you could take whatever lunch hour you get and just go be alone, go sit in your car alone. I remember thinking I'm so overstimulated. I'm with people all the time. Mm -hmm. So I might take my lunch and just go sit and stare at trees in my car Mm -hmm. and listen to music or close my eyes for 10 minutes. If you can take just a couple minutes as soon as you get to work and just take some time out before the day begins. Sometimes I would do my quiet time at my desk. I would get to work early so that I could kind of sit there and have some alone time with my Bible. And then I would put it away and I would start work when I needed to. But it's very different. And Marie, you're totally right. I felt like it came in spurts, you know, like, okay, I can do this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but like Thursday or Friday, I need to make sure I take that time out. Yeah. Right. Trying to balance. Yeah. How do you know or evaluate whether you're practicing true self-care or something not so good? I ask myself, am I actually going to feel better after doing this? Am I really going to be better off and refreshed and recharged? Or is it going to make me tired and cranky and lonely, you know? Mm -hmm. And how is it going to affect my future self? Because some of the things may not always feel amazing at the moment, like exercise or making that doctor's appointment or that dentist appointment or going to a counselor. You Mm -hmm. know, that's that's not a fun thing to do, but sometimes very necessary or giving up a food that makes you feel bad or those things you won't see uh, a lot of Instagram hashtags for, you know, self-care. And it's like a picture of you at your counselor, but they will make you feel better. They will make you your body will say thank you if you do those things. That's true. I also wrote down, do I good? Do I have good mental stability? Do I have the energy to live and serve well? Or am I running to destructive habits? I think sometimes you can have a destructive habit that maybe is enjoyable at the beginning, but we've talked about already that you feel worse in the end. Mm. Marie, you and I talked and I talked about my weight loss journey before. And so in that, I was in a bad habit of running to food to feed my anxiety, my fear. I would run to food for everything. I was happy. Oh, let's eat. I was sad. Oh, let's eat. I was angry. Let's eat. Well, it was something that was destructive in my life. And so I felt worse afterwards, guilty, shameful, and it impacted my life in a very negative way. We each have things that we run to. So what are you running to? And is it going to really help in the end? Mm Mm-hmm. This is just a little side note, but it got me thinking about my daughter. She and her husband go to a different church and their pastor challenged them to take a fast from time wasters. And so last week she took all the time wasters off her phone. So she wasn't allowed to be on Instagram or Facebook. There were a variety of things that she had taken off her phone. And I feel like that's kind of like food. I think social media and like apps on our phone can be like your situation with the food. Oh, I'm happy. Let me get on my time wasters. Oh, I'm sad. Let me get on my time wasters. I'm bored. Like you can go to those. It was challenging to me personally that she had done that. I thought it was a good exercise. Right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. What are some ways that you practice or have practiced self-care in your life? For me, I haven't said much about this, but definitely staying in God's word and spending time with him daily, because if, even if I do all the other things, exercise, eat right, Mm. you know, be creative, whatever, it all has to kind of fall under that umbrella first, you know, Mm -hmm. everything just goes better if I start the day off right. Like Mindy was saying, you have to work, work through a lot of things in your head and in your own heart before you can, you know, be the person you need to be to the people around you. So for me, it's, it's that exercise, eating healthy, um, time with friends, having good conversations. I know uh, Marie and I walk every Wednesday morning and part of that's for the physical exercise, but most of the, most of the time it's for the conversation for the, you know, it's a lot cheaper than going to a counselor, Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) having that time with a friend. Um, and then lastly, like being creative, that's, that's a stress releaser for me is to, Mm -hmm. to sit down and spend some time creating. Right. I love all of those things. I, um, I mentioned earlier that I used to stay up really late to read a book when the kids were little. 
Well, unfortunately, um, I put that down as the first thing that I needed to do was get a good night's rest because I still enjoy staying up late, but I still have to get up early to help get kids ready for school and out the door. And so that's one of the things that I have to cut myself off at night at 10 PM and say, Mindy, it's bedtime, get in bed Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I do still enjoy those quiet evenings. But I love what Julie said, all of those things. When I think about self-care that I've practiced most consistently in my life, and this is going to sound just unrealistic for some people, but my most consistent self-care is that I like to eat lunch alone and spend the next hour alone. I think from having five kids and years Mm -hmm. of afternoon naps, that became such a pattern in my life that it's almost like I need it to even function. I can go, you know, a few days, obviously, without that, but like school breaks, long vacations, weekends, my kids have heard me say, I'm going to eat lunch by myself. Don't bother me. And I want the next hour by myself. (laughs) I feel that that is so healthy, though, Marie. And when my kids were little, we instituted, you know, they, they had nap time. Well, then you have older kids that grow out of the nap time. They're like, well, I'm not tired. Well, so then we instituted quiet time. Mm -hmm. Well, while your little brothers are sleeping, you're going to also still be in your room figuring out what to do with yourself for an hour. And we're calling it quiet time. Well, we had quiet time. People used to make fun of us because our, (laughs) our teenagers would have quiet time. We made them. (laughs) Yeah. We would make them still on, especially Sunday afternoons, kind of just go to your room, read a book, figure out what to do with yourself for an hour. We just need some quiet so I, I'm with you on that, instituting just some alone time right. to be by yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I think it's a good example for your kids, too, to yes. hear. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, now, like, when you see your kids as they grow and they're older, Abby Ray's at college, and she knows, she'll tell me, yeah, I was eating lunch with all my friends, and I knew I had to go to work later, so I, I cut out of lunch early because I really needed some quiet time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I think that's really healthy for her to to carve out that time and know that about herself. She said, if I don't get it, I'm going to feel a little crazy later. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, setting that example for your kids so that when they get older and they're making their own choices about how they're going to, you know, set up their days that they realize when they need to take a time out. Mm-hmm. Does your self-care affect others or maybe how does your self-care affect others? Because it always probably does, unless you are completely alone and nobody even knows that you did it. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking that as we take care of ourselves, we all have families, whether they live with us or whether they're far away. By us taking care of ourselves, we're better able to take care of those that we love and those that the Lord puts in our lives. Even when, I mean, I'll say on my best days where Mentally, I'm feeling great. Physically, I'm feeling great. Um, I've done the things I need to do to take care of myself. You know, even running to Walmart or Target, you know, I'm looking out. I'm looking out at others. I'm able to smile. I'm able to be friendly. Um, And then when my kids come home from school, I hope that I'm fully ready to care for them. By me uh, being in my right mind, I'm able to help take care of the things that they're struggling with. I can set myself aside because I've already taken care of that. Mm, And whatever mm -hmm. needs my husband has, my children have, I can fully devote myself then to them because my bucket is full and Mm -hmm. I'm not giving out of nothing. Yeah, that was what I was thinking of. Just that if your self-care renews you and replenishes your ability to keep on doing what you need to do, then it's affecting others in a good way. We can't just run indefinitely on empty. Right. You're going to run out of just sheer willpower. So you really do need to do what is going to replenish you. Yeah, I'd say it goes back to the mom sets the tone for the house, whether you like it or not, you know, Mm -hmm, that it doesn't seem fair all the time, but it's true. (laughs) And so nobody wants to be around an emotional train wreck, you know, Mm because if if that's what you're if that's what you're um, projecting, everybody feels it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't seem fair sometimes, but it's true. So I think that the more we can deal with on our own, then we're better prepared to be what we need to be to the people around us. 
Right. Right. It would be nice too to be intentional in our living, you know, to get your eyes, take care of yourself, but then get your eyes off of yourself. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I'm tired of thinking about myself. I'm, I'm, I can't get away from me. So if Mm -hmm. I can get my eyes and somehow serve or be intentional with the other people in my life, I feel like I am truly living. I'm thriving. So then to go be able to do something for someone else, to write a card, to send a gift, to put together a care package, um, to plan for things in the future. I think it opens and frees your mind to really and truly live a full life. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I think the goal of self-care should be selfless living. Yeah, that's a good point just to not let it end with the self-care, but to to remember the reason you're doing it. Right. What are some practical tips you've learned that might help someone else right now? I was thinking about the people that say that they don't need time for themselves or Mm -hmm. they kind of have a bit of the martyr complex. Like as long as there's one thing that is needed of them, they won't take time out. It's really unhealthy to teach your kids that mom is always available to meet your needs. That Mm -hmm. is, that is a lie. (laughs) And it's really an unhealthy strategy for the family function. Well, and the, you know, to have a martyr complex is to say, I'm indispensable, you know, like I'm necessary, I don't know, for everything to function perfectly. Right. Right. I I would say to people that have a hard time practicing self-care, I would just say that you deserve it. You truly deserve it. And people will respect you more if you say, here are the boundaries for what I'm willing to do. And then I need to do this other thing for myself. And you can start small. Just like when we were talking about homes last week and maybe you start decluttering one drawer, start small with taking care of yourself. Maybe after dinner, all right, now I'm taking a half hour to go and play the piano or read a book or watch a show. I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go for a walk and whatever needs either within my own family or outside of my own family come during that time, I'm going to set them aside. I think once you pick a small area and then you get a little bit of success, you'll probably want a little bit more. Right. It's neat for our families to see us in a different light, to see that we still have interests, that we still have creative outlets, that we still have things that we like to do. That's who we are. I don't think you completely lose yourself just because you have a family. The behavior that I exhibit, I hope that it teaches my kids how I hope that they then live their lives when they're grown and have children. Like I hope that they make time to go on dates with their spouse. Um, Yes, it might be really hard when the kids are young to go jump through all the hoops, get the babysitter, you're tired, you have to pay for it. But to set that example for them of dating your spouse, it's totally worth it. Um, When the kids are older, maybe you're able to take overnight trips with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, your kids may not enjoy the person that stays at your house with them. Well, I'm sorry, but mom and dad are going to go away. (laughs) And I've told my own kids, and I hope that when you have children, that you'll go away with your spouse too. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to Mm -hmm. take trips together. Right. If you wait for your kids to give you permission to do things like that, you'll never go away. (laughs) No, it's true. (laughs) It's, It's worth the headache, the hoops to jump through to spend time with your spouse too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. Well, I hope that this discussion on self-care is helpful to listeners. I know that I would be really interested to hear what other people do for self-care. I mean, I find it fascinating to learn about other people and what other people enjoy and how they live their lives. So if you, if something sparked an idea in you and you'd like to share what you do for self-care or particularly if you work full time and Mm -hmm. You've found a way to kind of balance self-care. I'm sure that there is a very unicorn-like concept out there that you work (laughs) full-time and you have perfect self-care. But just what have you found to do? That'd be helpful for everyone. All right, guys. So it's coming up on the weekend when we record. Name one thing you're going to do for self-care. It's going to be really cold this weekend. I think it's going to be 11 degrees on Sunday. Oh, wow. So I am going to sit by my fireplace and read a book. That is awesome. Well, I've stocked up on a lot of 
foods because it's supposed to snow a lot for us this weekend and it's supposed to be three degrees on Sunday. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I actually am enjoying just a quiet house right now. The kids are all off on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. So it's going to be a full busy weekend. And so I'm going to just, I'm going to keep the TV off, the music off. I'm going to enjoy doing the laundry and preparing dinner in the quiet. That's going to help me feel rejuvenated. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And Steve and I are going to go on a date tonight to one of the places that I said I wanted to try in my 2019 list, the melting pot. The melting pot. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. So I'm picturing myself having a really good dinner and some good conversation. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that'll be fun. You'll love it. Oh, I can't wait to hear about that. All right, guys. Enjoy your long weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Great. You too. bye. Bye. Friends, we're so glad you joined us today. We'd love to hear your questions and comments about today's episode or any suggestions you have for future topics. You can find us at Midlife Matters on both Facebook and Instagram. You can also contact us at midlifematterspodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, we hope you'll tell a friend. If your friend doesn't know how to listen to podcasts, we hope that you'll show them how to download a podcast app and subscribe so that each week they can enjoy our show too. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday. Bye.